My name's Duncan Smith and I'm a, a Principal Occupational Hygiene Specialist Inspector with the Health and Safety Executive. It was very nice to, to have recognition from our professional body to, to uh, effectively say that, that, that uh, you know, the, the work we are doing is valuable uh, and particularly in relation to the Peter Isaac Award. Uh, whereby you know it, it is for a, an outstanding initiative uh, contributing to the reduction of uh, ill health at work and, and that's exactly what the likes of uh, HSE as the regulator should be doing so um, you know uh, it was a very good initiative and it's nice to be recognized uh, for that initiative. We HSE recognised that uh, uh, cooling towers were a, a significant cause of uh, Legionnaires' disease and, uh, and where there was an outbreak of, of uh, Legionnaires' disease associated with a cooling tower, it can affect uh, many people. On average, uh, you know, 28 people are affected by a cooling tower Legionnaires' disease outbreak and, and with a mortality rate of, of around 10% of those uh, affected, uh, we felt that this was a, a, an area where we could intervene and make a difference um, with, with around about two and a half thousand sites uh, with cooling towers in, in uh, Great Britain. Uh, we felt that uh, this was within within our gift to intervene and to uh, to you know to to make a difference to reduce the likelihood of these high consequence uh, low frequency events. Uh, and we had some analysis from our science division, which showed in the period up to August 2011, there were in fact uh, seven, uh, the 10 year period to August 2017, there were seven outbreaks associated with cooling towers uh, that, that resulted in uh, 193 cases of Legionnaires disease and, uh, and 10 deaths. We uh, post the intervention, uh, from uh, June uh, 2014 through to uh, the, the end of June this year, in this, that six-year period, uh, as a result of our interventions, we, you know, we we have shown that that uh, likelihood has uh, has has actually uh, come down significantly. In that six-year period, so since there's been uh, one outbreak, which accounted for five cases uh, and no deaths. So, you know, as a result of uh, HSE uh, and the Office for Nuclear Regulator doing uh, 1,906 inspections and a significant amount of stakeholder work uh, to, to drive home the message about uh, increasing standards of compliance and reducing the, uh, the, the, the consequence or the, the reducing the likelihood of a uh, Legionnaire's disease outbreak, we feel that we've been able to uh, to demonstrate uh, that that effect, uh, uh, and clearly BOHS felt the same uh, uh, and uh, were able to, uh, to to give us the the award for the initiative uh, accordingly. What uh, what the, uh, the 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 main intervention was in 2013 and 2014. Since then, we went back to do some sampling of uh, of standards because the the main objective of the initiative was to ensure sustained compliance, uh, and we did some uh, some further visits to sample how well uh, those operating cooling towers were were managing the risk, uh, and we went back in in 2015, 20, uh, 2015 to to 2016, and also we did some follow up work in 2017 2018, but. The work has seen uh, a, a subsequent increase in, in compliance rates so that uh, we're taking less enforcement action uh, as we're following up, which is an indication that to the regulator that, that uh, the, the compliance is being sustained at the minute. We shouldn't ever uh, not go back. We, 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 we're not saying that uh, the problem is fixed forever. But uh, we've certainly, you know, we're probably at the, the, the point where standards of Legionella management in, in cooling towers across Great Britain uh, are, are the highest they have ever been. Uh, and we want to try and maintain that and, and satisfy ourselves as a regulator 
that uh, um, that that control isn't uh, isn't lapsing in the future. So you know what we do have now is a baseline for compliance because of the extensive work that this intervention involved. Uh, we can go back and assess performance against this comprehensive baseline that didn't exist before. I, I'm able to say what we're involved with at the minute, which is a significant project, and that is uh, supporting uh, the uh, colleagues in the NHS and, and healthcare in relation to COVID-19 response. HSE has uh, put up a, a PPE unit uh, and uh, occupational hygienists from HSE are playing a very important role uh, in that uh, PPE unit in terms of uh, technical assessment, of PPE entering the supply chain uh, and uh, also supporting NHS colleagues in terms of procurement uh, and uh, in terms of uh, manufacturing as well and setting standards and, and providing advice in terms of uh, um, the, the, the right PPE uh, that, that's needed to assist front uh, frontline healthcare staff and to ensure they're suitably protected. I think uh, over the last uh, few months, so if we just take uh, the COVID response as an example, it, it, it's highlighted uh, where occupational hygienists can add value uh, in terms of uh, you know, controls to uh, reduce exposure uh, and reduce reliance on, uh, on PPE. Uh, and also, you know, in terms of uh, PPE design and application, uh, I, I think there's a significant role for us going forward. And I see that, that there's a lot of research to be done uh, around uh, engineering controls uh, and uh, working with other professional bodies to uh, achieve a, a, a safer workplace in response to future pandemics and uh, in healthcare generally. HSE would like to pass on a thanks to BOHS uh, for, uh, for, for this award. Um, we, we do take this uh, very seriously and we're very pleased to, uh, to receive this. Uh, and, uh, you know, everyone involved in the delivery of this initi initiative, uh, the, the uh, you know, occupational hygiene unit within, uh, within our field operations team are, are uh, you know, very, very, very pleased and, and proud of, of, uh, of our achievements.